Training My Shadow Part 1 In the quaint town of Crestwood, where time seemed to move at its own unhurried pace, two friends, Michael and Alice, found themselves on the cusp of an extraordinary adventure. Seventeen-year-old Michael, with his tousled blonde hair, navigated the labyrinth of high school with a modest demeanor that belied the potential for greatness within him. Beside him was Alice, her curiosity about the world matched only by her love for the written word. On a crisp autumn afternoon, their shared literary assignment led them to the weathered corridors of Crestwood High's ancient library. Michael, driven by a sense of duty, gravitated towards the right shelves, his fingers exploring the spines of classics with a methodical precision. Meanwhile, Alice, her enthusiasm guiding her, wandered towards the left shelves, her eyes scanning titles in search of inspiration for their creative endeavor. As Michael's hand brushed against the books on the right, a peculiar sensation tingled through his fingertips. Intrigued, he inspected the shelves closely, eventually resting his hand on a seemingly ordinary book. Little did he know that his touch would set in motion the revelation of a hidden world. Behind the chosen book, the shelf responded with a subtle creak, revealing a secret compartment that emitted a soft, mysterious glow. The revelation startled Michael, and he beckoned Alice over to share in the awe-inspiring discovery. Together, they gazed into the clandestine chamber that held the Book of Shadows, its cover adorned with faded symbols that hinted at an ancient power waiting to be unlocked. Michael, with his modest charm, and Alice, with her spirited curiosity, hesitated before delving into the forgotten tales within the pages of the mysterious book. Little did they realize that their seemingly routine visit to the library had opened a portal to a world where shadows were not mere echoes but sentient beings awaiting a connection with the chosen few. In the dimly lit library, where the scent of old parchment lingered in the air, Michael and Alice embarked on a journey that would redefine their high school experience. The Book of Shadows concealed for generations, held the promise of secrets, revelations, and a friendship tested by the extraordinary. As the hidden door swung open, Crestwood's history, once obscured in shadows, unfolded before their eyes, setting the stage for an adventure that would intertwine the destinies of these two friends in ways they could never have imagined. Michael's fingers lingered on the Book of Shadows, tracing the faded symbols as he shared a bemused glance with Alice. The library's mystique seemed to wrap around them like a cloak, and curiosity sparked in their eyes. Michael, Alice, have you ever stumbled upon a book that practically begs you to open it? Alice, with a mischievous grin, glanced around to make sure they were alone. Alice, only, like, every time I walk into a bookstore. But this one. It's like it's got secrets. Michael, right? It's almost like it's calling out to us. Hey, unsuspecting high school students, come unravel my mysteries. Alice, well, who are we to ignore a book's plea for attention? Let's flip it open and see if it's got any hidden treasure maps or ancient spells. Michael, or maybe it's just a really elaborate prank by the library ghosts. Gotcha, humans! As they leafed through the pages, a mixture of excitement and confusion etched across their faces. Alice, okay, so, what if this book isn't just fiction? 
What if it's like a guide to unleashing some mystical powers or communicating with interdimensional beings? Michael, yeah, right. Next thing you know, we'll be summoning shadow minions to do our homework. Alice, now you're talking. Imagine the possibilities. Shadow, fetch me some pizza. Michael, or, Shadow, make my bed. We could revolutionize the whole chores industry. Their banter turned from speculation to a mischievous plan. Alice, what if we, you know, borrow this book and take it home? We can uncover its secrets in the safety of our own fortress. Michael, stealing a mystical book. That's got bad idea written all over it. But hey, we're young and reckless, right? Alice, absolutely. Who knows, this might be the key to unlocking the secrets of the universe. Or just a really bizarre and entertaining evening. With a shared smirk, they carefully tucked the Book of Shadows under Michael's jacket, convinced that their ordinary high school lives were about to take a turn toward the extraordinary. Little did they know the hilariously unexpected twists and turns that awaited them as they embarked on an adventure fueled by the enigmatic pages of a seemingly forgotten book. As Michael and Alice furtively concealed the Book of Shadows in Michael's backpack, their secret maneuvering was interrupted by the unexpected arrival of their classmates, Jack and Lucas. The atmosphere became charged with a mix of suspense and amusement as they exchanged glances, desperately hoping the book remained hidden. Jack, hey, what's going on here? Planning a covert operation in the library? Alice, oh, just a, um, surprise book club meeting. Super exclusive. You guys wouldn't understand. Lucas, peering into Michael's backpack, noticed the peculiar assortment of books. Lucas, is that the adventures of Timmy the Tiny Turtle and Sally's colorful ABCs? Wow, real page turners, huh? Jack, yeah, I've heard those are college-level material. You guys are ahead of the game. Michael, attempting to divert their attention, shrugged nonchalantly. Michael, just expanding our literary horizons, you know? Timmy and Sally are complex characters with deep existential crises. Alice, Actually, we're doing a comparative analysis. Timmy's struggles parallel Hamlet's in many ways. You'd be surprised. Lucas, Shakespeare would be proud. So, what's the big secret? Why the hushed tones and the covert stash? Jack, yeah. Why the top-secret backpack operation? As the tension built, Michael and Alice exchanged a quick glance, their minds racing to concoct a convincing story. Alice, okay, fine. But you have to swear not to tell anyone. We've discovered a hidden dimension within these children's books. Timmy and Sally are our interdimensional guides. Lucas, interdimensional guides? Seriously? Michael, absolutely. We've even got our own secret handshake. Wanna see? Jack and Lucas exchanged amused glances before bursting into laughter. Jack, all right, interdimensional travelers, we won't spill your top-secret kindergarten conspiracy. 
but you owe us a front row seat to the next chapter of Timmy's existential journey. Lucas, and maybe Sally's vivid exploration of the color spectrum. Who knew ABCs could be so enlightening? As the laughter echoed through the library, Michael and Alice breathed a sigh of relief, confident that their mundane cover story had successfully diverted their classmates' attention from the true mystery hidden in Michael's backpack. As the laughter of Jack and Lucas faded into the distance, Alice turned to Michael with an amused yet questioning expression. Alice, okay, spill it, Michael. The Adventures of Timmy the Tiny Turtle and Sally's Colorful ABCs? Seriously? Were they the first books you could find, or is there some hidden literary genius in those kindergarten tales that I'm missing? Michael, feigning innocence, grinned in response. Michael, well, you see, Alice, I figured if we're going to create a diversion, it might as well be entertaining for everyone. Who doesn't love a good story about Timmy's existential crises or Sally's quest for the perfect shade of blue? Alice, you have a point. I never realized kindergarten stories could be so versatile. But seriously, why those books? Is there a method to your madness? Michael, let's just say I wanted our classmates to be so busy laughing at the absurdity of our literary analysis that they wouldn't give a second thought to what we were really up to. Alice, so, it was a strategic move to throw them off the scent of the real mystery hidden in that backpack of yours? Clever, very clever. Michael, exactly. Besides, who could resist the allure of Timmy and Sally? I thought it was a foolproof plan. Alice, well, Mr. Mastermind, next time let's choose something a little more inconspicuous. Maybe a dense textbook on quantum physics? That'll put them to sleep faster than Timmy's bedtime adventures. Michael, fair point. But where's the fun in that? We're on an interdimensional journey with Timmy. In the cozy confines of Michael's home, the scent of freshly baked cakes wafted through the air, tempting both Michael and Alice. Mrs. Anderson, Michael's mother, looked on with a warm smile as she set a plate loaded with delicious treats on the dining table. Mrs. Anderson, come, you too, indulge in these delightful cakes. I've made them just for you. Alice, eyes sparkling with anticipation, shot a pleading look at Michael. Alice, Seriously, Michael, we can't let these go to waste. Your mom's cakes are legendary. Michael, determined to keep up the mystical facade, insisted with a playful grin. Michael, cakes can wait. We have an ancient ritual to perform first. Get ready for the magic of dessert summoning. He theatrically waved his arms and began chanting in the same peculiar manner as before, adding even more bizarre inflections. The words sounded like a concoction of gibberish and an attempt at yodeling. Michael, by the mystical powers of the Shadow Realm, I command thee, Shadow of Dessert Delivery, to bring forth cakes so divine, they could make even Timmy the tiny turtle reconsider his life choices. Alice couldn't contain her laughter, and as Michael continued his outlandish incantation, her amusement grew. Alice, I can't believe you're going through with this. I've read more convincing spells in a cereal box. 
Michael, now pushing the limits of his vocal acrobatics, concluded his performance with a grand flourish. The room, however, remained devoid of any summoned shadows or magical cake-bearing entities. Michael, well, that was... unexpected. Alice, clutching her stomach from the laughter, struggled to speak. Alice, Michael, you're a wizard of absolute nonsense. Are we going to get our cakes, or should I start planning a heist on your mom's kitchen? Michael, catching his breath, conceded with a sheepish grin. Michael, okay, okay. Maybe dessert summoning isn't my strong suit. Let's stick to the classics and grab those cakes before they vanish into thin air. As they reached for the cakes, Alice, still overcome by laughter, attempted to respond but found herself collapsing onto a nearby chair. Michael, suppressing a chuckle, reached over to her. Michael, looks like the real magic here is the power of a good laugh. Who needs ancient incantations when we have the timeless charm of mom's cakes and your infectious laughter? The failed attempt at dessert summoning became an unexpected highlight of their evening, leaving them with a tale of laughter, absurdity, and a newfound appreciation for the simple joys of indulging in Mrs. Anderson's legendary cakes. As the laughter from their failed dessert summoning attempt subsided, Alice, fortified by the delightful cakes, seized the opportunity to take charge. With a mischievous glint in her eyes, she snatched the Book of Shadows from Michael's hands and declared her own plan. Alice, all right, Michael, stand back. I've got this. Maybe the ancient shadow language is meant to be read backward. Let me give it a shot. Michael, still recovering from his laughter, watched with a mix of amusement and curiosity as Alice flipped through the pages, searching for the incantation that had stumped him moments before. Alice, if I learned anything from all those mystery novels, it's that sometimes you need to think backward to move forward. Here goes nothing. With an air of seriousness, Alice began reciting the incantation in reverse, her words transforming into a bizarre symphony of sounds that echoed through the room. Alice, ROF Psi Equal DNA Psi T, DNA ROF Night Snight Odakov Voy Tun Odakov Voy Odakov Voy DNA Voy Odakov, ROF Dale New Voy. Michael, initially trying to maintain a composed demeanor, couldn't contain himself any longer. Laughter bubbled up from deep within, and soon he was doubled over, clutching his stomach. Michael, Alice, you've turned ancient magic into a tongue-twisting carnival. Are you trying to summon a shadow or a sideshow clown? Alice, caught between determination and infectious laughter, continued her backward recitation with a playful glare. Alice, wait, I think I felt a mystical vibe there. Maybe I'm on to something. Michael, oh yes, the mystical vibe of a linguistic roller coaster. I bet even the shadows are confused now. Alice, unable to maintain her serious facade, burst into laughter alongside Michael. The room echoed with their shared amusement, and Mrs. Anderson, hearing the commotion from the kitchen, peeked in with a quizzical expression. Mrs. Anderson, what on earth is happening here? Michael, wiping away tears of laughter, managed to explain between chuckles. Michael, just a bit of linguistic gymnastics, Mom. 
Alice here thinks she can crack the code of the shadow language by reading it backward. Mrs. Anderson shook her head with a smile, deciding to leave the duo to their peculiar endeavors. Alice, now fully embracing the comedic aspect of the situation, joined Michael in laughter. Alice, all right, maybe backward isn't the key. But who knew ancient magic could sound so hilariously ridiculous? Let's stick to the basics and leave the linguistic acrobatics for another day. As they composed themselves, Michael and Alice couldn't help but appreciate the unexpected humor woven into their mystical misadventures with the Book of Shadows. In the dim glow of the small desk lamp, Michael meticulously pored over the ancient text in the Book of Shadows. His exhaustion from the earlier antics with Alice was momentarily forgotten as he focused on deciphering the elusive paragraphs that hinted at the conditions for summoning a shadow. Michael, determined to uncover the secrets within the pages, carefully adjusted the lamp's position, casting a subtle shadow on the room. He began to recite the incantation with a newfound sense of purpose, the words escaping his lips in a measured cadence. Michael, in the dance of shadows and the play of light, let the essence of the hidden emerge, where darkness meets the flickering flame. As he finished the incantation, Michael squinted, half expecting a mysterious silhouette to materialize in the dimness. However, to his surprise, only his own shadow danced along the walls. Michael, hmm, maybe I missed something. Shadows, where are you hiding? Undeterred, he continued to experiment, adjusting the lamp's angle and repeating the incantation in various tones and speeds. Yet, no matter how intricately he followed the instructions, the room remained devoid of any summoned shadows. Michael, what am I missing here? Is there a secret handshake for shadows that I forgot to include? As he pondered, a thought struck him. Perhaps it wasn't just about reducing the light, maybe it was about creating the right ambience. Michael recalled a part of the text that mentioned the harmony of shadows and light, a delicate balance that allowed the shadows to manifest. With newfound insight, Michael decided to go beyond the confines of the ancient text. He dimmed the desk lamp even further, allowing the room to be bathed in a soft, ambient glow. He positioned himself in the center of the room and, with a mix of determination and hope, recited the incantation once more. Michael, in the delicate dance of shadows and the gentle play of light, let the essence of the hidden emerge, where darkness gracefully meets the flickering flame. As the last words left his lips, a subtle shift occurred. Embracing the newfound harmony between light and shadow, Michael couldn't resist the urge to indulge in a spontaneous dance with his own shadow. In the dimly lit room, he began a series of comical moves, twirls, and exaggerated gestures. Unbeknownst to him, his shadow, animated by an unseen force, mirrored each gesture with playful precision. Michael, all right, Mr. Shadow, let's see if you can keep up with this. His shadow responded seamlessly, becoming an unwitting partner in this shadowy performance. Michael continued with a parade of amusing antics, blissfully unaware of the enchanting phenomenon occurring behind him. As the impromptu dance reached its peak, Michael attempted a particularly tricky move involving a spin and a dramatic flourish. To his surprise, his shadow faltered, unable to replicate the intricate motion. Michael, 
Wait a minute. Gotcha. You missed that one. What happened, Mr. Shadow? Losing your touch? It was at this moment that Michael, still grinning, turned to fully face his shadow. He noticed the subtle animation and the lively response to his movements. Michael, hold on a second. You're not just a regular shadow, are you? The shadow, with a bowed head, responded with a newfound sense of personality. Shadow, to admit, I was always here for you. Only now do you see me? Michael, wide-eyed and amazed, nodded in acknowledgement. Michael, now I see you, but wait, can I hear you too? Is this for real? How incredible is this? That you notice me too. The room, now filled with an unexpected synergy between Michael and his animated shadow, unfolded a magical connection that went beyond the ordinary dance of light and darkness. Little did Michael realize that this whimsical encounter was just the beginning of a profound exploration into the mystical bond between a person and their shadow, where a silent companionship turned into a dance of communication and discovery. Amidst the mystical dance of light and shadow, Michael, now aware of his animated companion, couldn't help but be intrigued by the possibilities. Michael, so, you mean you can exist without me? What else can you do? Shadow, indeed, I can venture up to 50 meters away now. But there are limitations, Michael. Michael, eyes widening with excitement, decided to test the newfound freedom of his shadow. He grabbed a nearby ball and tossed it towards the shadow, expecting it to catch the object like any physical entity would. Michael, let's see how you handle this. To his surprise, the shadow made a futile attempt to catch the ball which simply passed through its incorporeal form. Michael burst into laughter. Michael, okay, so maybe catching isn't your strongest suit. We'll work on that. The shadow, undeterred, continued to revel in its newfound independence, demonstrating its ability to move freely around the room. Yet, despite this newfound freedom, it remained bound by an invisible connection to Michael. Shadow, I am free to move, but you remain my master. It's an interesting balance. Michael, pondering the implications, took a step back and considered the potential of this unique relationship. Michael, you want distance, huh? Let's measure this out. He paced the room with the shadow in tow until he reached a point exactly 50 meters away. Shadow, this is far enough. Michael, so, what's with the distance, my shadowy friend? Shadow, after all these years, it's time I had some space. You never noticed me before and now I want to be seen from a distance. Michael, realizing the gravity of the situation, looked sincerely at his shadow. Michael, I had no idea I neglected you for so long. When did I upset you so much? Shadow, it's not about a specific moment. It's about all those years when you lived in the light, oblivious to the one who followed you in the shadows. Michael, with a heartfelt expression, made a resolution. Michael, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. From now on, we're partners, inseparable. No more neglect. 
I want you to be a part of everything I do. Shadow, considering Michael's words, began to soften. Shadow, partners, you say? Michael, absolutely. We'll share the spotlight from now on. Deal? Shadow, deal. As a newfound understanding blossomed between Michael and his shadow, the room seemed to embrace the harmony of light and darkness, symbolizing the integration of two entities that had long existed in parallel. Little did they know that this reconciliation would mark the beginning of a journey where light and shadow danced together, creating a bond stronger than ever before. The hours passed as if mere minutes, and Michael and Shadow had become the best of friends. When morning arrived and his mom called, Alice is here, are you ready for school? Michael had a surprise prepared for Alice. She entered Michael's room and stumbled over things scattered on the floor. Meanwhile, Shadow addressed Alice with a question that seemed to hide a profound secret. Alice, speaking to Shadow, Michael, what do you mean? What moment is this now? Shadow, with a solemn tone, it's time to confess everything. I want to tell you how much I love you. And you? Alice, half asleep, responding, What kind of question is that now, Michael? Shadow then confessed that he had feelings for Alice since the ninth grade when he saved her from Jack at the pool. Alice was about to confess everything when she saw Michael coming out of the bathroom with a towel on his head. Alice, what is this? Michael, laughing, surprise. There's a new member on our team, Shadow, my shadow friend. Alice, looking between Michael and the shadow, eventually laughing, I can't believe my eyes. Shadow, huh? That's really interesting. Shadow, to Alice, yes, and I have a confession to make. I've been in love with you since I saved you at the pool. Alice, with a surprised look, tried to process everything as Michael laughed at the amusing situation unfolding. Alice, wow, this is really a surprising morning. Michael, how long have you been hiding this romantic secret with Shadow? Michael, with a wide smile, why do you think I was doing all those incantations with ancient books? I wanted to give Shadow a chance to express himself. As Alice tried to fully comprehend the peculiar situation, she began to smile, acknowledging the unexpected charm of their morning. Hey, Alice, let's pretend we're heading to school until your mother leaves for work, and then come back here to continue our work. Alice, raising an eyebrow, responded, and the math test? Is it today? Michael, feigning innocence, replied, oh, the math test. I didn't get ready. Maybe you prepared last night? Alice, with a smirk, retorted, obviously not. But you know it's the last grade we can't afford to mess up. What do we do? Michael, thinking on his feet, suggested, well, let's talk to our friend, Shadow, for help. Alice, puzzled, asked, how? He's as unprepared as you. Shadow, chiming in, remarked, that speaks for yourself, my friend. I always handle it like a champ. Michael, grinning, added, See, Alice? We've got this. 
We'll take the test and then quickly come back to continue. Confident in their unconventional plan, Michael and Alice left for the school charade, secretly plotting with a playful shadow to tackle the impending math test. As Michael and Alice embarked on their pretend journey to school, Michael armed himself with a tiny keychain-type LED flashlight, the most powerful in its category. Of course, he also brought the Book of Shadows. While on the way, Michael decided to share a newfound discovery with Alice. Driving along, Michael turned to Alice with a mischievous smile, you know, Alice, something amazing happened last night. With this tiny flashlight, I realized that behind the letters in that incomprehensible language, if you shine the light, you can see other letters in the shadow of the initial ones. Alice, fascinated by Michael's revelation, asked, Is this what you were doing all night? That's great! I think I have to admit, I like your discovery, that is, shadow, I mean. Michael chuckled, well, it seems like our little experiments with ancient texts are paying off. Who knew a tiny flashlight could unveil hidden messages? And about shadow, I'm glad you're starting to appreciate our mysterious friend. As they continued their journey, the air buzzed with excitement and the promise of unraveling more mystical secrets. Excitement sparkled in Michael's eyes as he continued driving, now armed not only with the Book of Shadows and the powerful flashlight, but also with a newfound revelation from the pages of the book. Hey, Alice, pay attention to what it says here, Shadow Weaver's art, ability, the protagonist can shape his shadow into complicated, temporary objects, from tools to complex structures. This skill proves invaluable for creative problem solving. And what do we have? Complicated math problems, right? I think we're onto something. We can use this enchantment in the test. Michael exclaimed, a grin playing on his face. Alice's eyes widened with a mix of surprise and anticipation. Wait, seriously? We can turn our shadows into math problem-solving wizards? Michael nodded, exactly. Imagine our shadows creating geometric shapes, formulas, and equations in the air. We'll be the masters of shadow math. This could be the secret weapon we need to ace that test. As they neared the school, the prospect of utilizing the newfound enchantment for their math test added an extra layer of excitement to the morning's adventure. Little did they know that the blend of ancient magic and modern ingenuity would turn the ordinary school day into a fantastical journey filled with unexpected twists and enchanting surprises. Before the start of class, Michael and Alice found themselves amidst banter from their classmates who had witnessed their peculiar behavior in the library. Jack quipped, Hey, Michael. Did you learn the alphabet from those dusty old books in the library? Or are you still working on it? Another chimed in, Alice, do you know numbers yet? How far can you count without getting lost? Laughter echoed through the room as the classmates teased Michael and Alice about their mysterious late-night library adventures. The math teacher, sensing the lively atmosphere, entered the class with a stern expression and a pile of geometry tests in hand. With a commanding tone, the teacher hushed the laughter, quiet, everyone. It's time to concentrate. You know this is the final test. Let's see how long you can laugh like that at the end. 
As the laughter subsided, Michael and Alice exchanged determined glances. As the math teacher distributed the geometry tests, Michael and Alice exchanged glances, both determined and excited about the secret weapon they were about to unleash. Michael discreetly opened the tiny yet powerful flashlight and, with a confident tone, began to recite the enchantment from the Book of Shadows. Michael, Shadow Weaver's Art, Shape and Solve the room filled with a mysterious energy as their shadows transformed into a small, intricate cylinder that only Alice and Michael could see. The solutions to the math problems materialize within the confines of their enchanted shadows, while others in the class noticed only faint, subtle movements without giving them any significance. Problem Find the radius of the inscribed circle in a triangle with sides of length 8 cm, 15 cm, and 17 cm. As Michael directed the flashlight towards the problem, their shadow responded by shaping itself into a dynamic representation of the given triangle. Within this shadowy geometrical figure, the inscribed circle appeared, and the shadow smoothly calculated and displayed the radius. Numbers and formulas seem to materialize in the shadow's confined space, providing the solution. Michael, watching the enchanting display, explained to Alice, Look, the shadow is using the given triangle to calculate the radius of the inscribed circle. It's like our own little math wizard. Alice nodded in amazement as the shadow seamlessly solved the problem within the limited space of its form. Geometry Problem 2, the three-dimensional prism problem, calculate the surface area of a right triangular prism with a base edge of 6 cm, height of 8 cm, and slant height of 10 cm. For the second problem, Michael directed the light towards the prism's dimensions. Their shadow transformed into a miniature, shadowy prism, showcasing the complex interplay of triangles and rectangles on its surfaces. As the shadow performed calculations within its confined space, the surface area of the prism emerged, providing the solution. Alice, captivated by the magical display, remarked, This is like having a geometry genie in the shadow. Solving these problems has never been more fascinating. The shadowy collaboration continued, and Michael and Alice marveled at their mysterious ally's ability to simplify complex geometry problems with ease. The classroom remained oblivious to the mystical mathematics unfolding before their eyes, leaving the enchanted duo with both a sense of accomplishment and the thrill of a secret shared only with their small, but extraordinary, shadow. Alice, awestruck by the magical display, whispered to Michael, This is incredible. Our little secret is helping us ace this test. Michael nodded, and they continued to tackle each problem with the assistance of their enchanted shadows, the solutions appearing effortlessly within the confined space only they could perceive. As the classmates glanced around, some noticed the subtle shadowy movements but dismissed them as mere distractions. Little did they realize the enchanting collaboration happening right under their noses. As the test concluded, the teacher noticed Michael playing with the flashlight and, suspecting potential cheating, approached him with a stern expression. Teacher, What's going on here? Hand over the flashlight. Cheating is a serious offense. Michael, complying, handed over the flashlight, but as the teacher examined it, he realized it was just an ordinary flashlight. Teacher, what's the meaning of this, Michael? Trying to cheat with a flashlight? Michael, 
grinning, explained, No, sir it's just a flashlight. We were using it to see our shadows better. Nothing more. The teacher, initially considering confiscation, returned the flashlight with a puzzled expression. The mystical nature of the enchanted shadows remained a secret between Michael, Alice, and their newfound magical ally to see the shadows better? Are you crazy? Alice scolded Michael in the hallway when they finally found themselves alone. Undeterred, Michael grinned, Come on, Alice, it's like having our own secret language. The shadows are helping us, and no one else knows. Alice rolled her eyes, but a small smile betrayed her amusement. Fine, but this better not get us into trouble. As they headed towards Michael's house, Jack and Lucas observed the two freshmen from a distance. Jack, smirking, remarked, Look, the two freshmen want to play. Let's watch what they do. I suspect we'll have entertainment material for a year. Lucas, less enthusiastic, replied, Seriously, haven't you seen how trivial these are? We'd better play billiards or something else anyway. Jack, intrigued, responded, Listen to me, Lucas. How many times have these two nerds screwed up? I'm sure they're up to something, and I want to know what. As Michael and Alice continued on their way, oblivious to the watchful eyes of Jack and Lucas, an air of mystery and anticipation hung in the hallway. Little did the observers know that the shadows harbored more secrets than they could imagine, and the adventures of the two freshmen were about to take an unexpected turn. Arriving home, Michael couldn't contain his excitement. Impatiently, he retrieved the Book of Shadows and the powerful flashlight, eager to explore its mysteries with Alice. With a grin, Michael said, Let's dive back into the enchantment, Alice. Who knows what other secrets we might uncover? The two friends huddled together, the dim light from the flashlight casting mysterious shadows around them as they delved into the ancient text. The pages whispered secrets of magic. The magical options unfolded before Michael and Alice like a tapestry of endless possibilities. The Book of Shadows revealed a myriad of abilities, each more enchanting than the last. Shifter, ability, the protagonist can merge with their shadow, allowing them to move seamlessly through the darkness, becoming invisible and intangible. Eclipsing Echo, ability, the shadow can mimic any sound it has heard, creating the perfect auditory illusion. This skill proves invaluable for espionage and misdirection, say Michael. Pen Shadow Projection Ability The shadow can be extended to manipulate objects at a distance, enabling the protagonist to interact with the environment remotely. Shadow Conduit Ability the shadow can absorb and store ambient energy from light sources, converting it into a potent force that can be unleashed as destructive beams or protective barriers. Nightmare Weave Ability The protagonist can shape their shadow into terrifying forms, inducing fear in others and using the illusions to distract or intimidate adversaries. Luminary Lure Ability the shadow can take on a mesmerizing glow, attracting attention and guiding the way in complete darkness, but also revealing the user's presence to others. Twilight Teleportation Ability The shadow can travel between two connected areas of darkness instantaneously, allowing for rapid movement across large distances. Aegis of Shadows Ability 
the protagonist's shadow can solidify into a protective shield capable of deflecting physical and mystical attacks. Nocturnal Nexus Ability The protagonist can link their shadow with the shadows of others, establishing a telepathic connection that facilitates communication and collaboration with a select group. Umbric Camouflage Ability The shadow can blend seamlessly with its surroundings, rendering the protagonist practically invisible in dimly lit environments. Herald of Dusk Ability, the shadow can manipulate the ambient shadows to create intricate patterns or symbols, serving as a means of communication or leaving enigmatic messages. Shade Surge Ability, the shadow can expand and envelop a large area, casting everything within it into temporary darkness. This can be used strategically to blind enemies or provide cover for escape. Ephemeral Embrace Ability The protagonist can envelop others in their shadow, temporarily merging their consciousness. This enables shared thoughts and experiences, fostering deep connections or extracting crucial information. Shadow Companion Ability the shadow can take on a semi-independent form, acting as a loyal companion with its own set of abilities. It can scout, assist in tasks, or even defend the protagonist. Spectral Tether Ability The shadow can create an intangible link with another person's shadow, allowing the protagonist to sense their location and well-being from afar. Twilight Triage Ability The shadow can accelerate the healing process, knitting wounds and injuries when the protagonist is in shadowy environments. However, this ability is limited and comes at a cost to the user. Shadow Replication Ability The shadow can duplicate objects by absorbing and replicating their shadow. This is useful for creating decoys or duplicating important items. Shadow Weaver's Art Ability The protagonist can shape their shadow into intricate, temporary objects, from tools to complex structures. This ability proves invaluable for creative problem solving. Excitement and anticipation filled the air as Michael, unable to contain his curiosity any longer, expressed his eagerness to see his own shadow with the newfound abilities. Alice, equally intrigued, nodded in agreement. All right, Michael, let's see what we can do, she said with a grin. Michael, with the flashlight in hand, prepared the perfect environment by adjusting the lighting and creating a dimly lit space. With a confident tone, he recited the incantation from the Book of Shadows. Michael, Shadow Weaver's art, unveil thy secrets. As the words resonated in the room, a sense of magic surrounded them. One by one, the shadows of Michael and Alice began to appear faintly, taking on a life of their own. Alice, marveling at the sight, whispered, This is incredible. Our shadows look so different now. Michael, with a mix of pride and wonder, replied, And that's just the beginning. Imagine what we can achieve together. Their shadows, once ordinary companions cast on the ground, now held the potential for enchantment and mystery. The room seemed to shimmer with newfound possibilities as Michael and Alice embarked on a journey of discovery with their shadows, exploring the magical realm that awaited them. Hidden in a bush near the window, Lucas and Jack observed Michael and Alice's shadow antics with puzzled expressions. Jack chuckled, what are they doing, playing with their shadows like in kindergarten? Lucas, 
squinting in confusion, added, I told you, Jack, they're just dust. You only saw what they were reading in the library. Look at the crazy movements they make. It's like they're in a puppet show. How embarrassing. Jack, grinning mischievously, whispered, we better keep filming this. Imagine the laughter when everyone sees our documentary. The Shadow Puppet Masters, coming soon to a theater near you. Lucas, stifling a laugh, replied, oh, this is gold. Maybe we should add a soundtrack to their shadow dance. Something like, I will survive or dancing queen. It'll be an instant hit. Jack, eagerly recording the bizarre shadow performance, suggested, and we'll call it Shadows Got Talent. I can already hear the applause. As Michael and Alice continued their mystical shadow movements inside, Jack and Lucas couldn't help but revel in the absurdity of the situation, capturing every comical moment with their camera. They were planning that their documentary would become the talk of the school, adding an unexpected twist to the legend of the Shadow Enchanters. Alice, delighted beyond measure by the enchanting abilities of her shadow, began to whisper something in its ear. With a playful twinkle, Alice's shadow glided over to Michael's shadow and planted a playful kiss on it. A whispered exchange followed, filled with secrets that only the shadows could comprehend. Observing the peculiar scene, Jack turned to Lucas with wide eyes. Did you also see how they did this? Did you film everything? Lucas, bored beyond measure and completely oblivious to the his friend antics, replied nonchalantly, I saw that raven dirtying their windshield. How great! Jack, eager to retrieve the footage, snatched the phone from Lucas's hand, exclaiming, What a miserable bird! Give it to me! You're useless! Lucas, unfazed, retorted, on my phone, no one puts a hand until here, pushing Jack back until he stumbled and fell into the plants in front of the window. Hearing the commotion outside, Michael swiftly signaled to Alice to check what was happening. Activating Umbra camouflage, his shadow blending seamlessly with the surroundings, Michael sneaked out undetected and discovered Jack and Lucas. Returning to Alice, he whispered urgently, You won't believe who's outside. It's Jack and Lucas. They followed us and even filmed us. Alice, a mischievous glint in her eyes, replied, Leave it to me. I have a plan. With a mischievous nod to Michael, who remained concealed in the shadows, Alice unveiled a plan that would turn the tables on their unexpected audience. The shadows, their magical allies, seemed to dance in agreement with the impending mischief. With a naughty glint in their eyes, Michael and Alice decided to employ a combination of their shadowy abilities to execute an elaborate plan to both recover the filmed footage and give Jack and Lucas a memorable scare. Michael, using Shade Surge, cast a shadowy veil over the immediate area, plunging it into temporary darkness. As Jack and Lucas struggled to see in the sudden obscurity, Alice activated her shadow companion. A semi-independent form of her shadow emerged, bearing an eerie resemblance to Alice herself. The Shadow Companion, adept at scouting and moving silently, quickly replicated the duo's phones using Shadow Replication. In a blink, the duplicated phones materialized, and the Shadow Companion carried them away unnoticed. 
Meanwhile, Michael, utilizing Shifter, seamlessly merged with his shadow, becoming invisible and intangible. He moved through the darkness undetected, ready to execute the next phase of their plan. As Jack and Lucas fumbled in the dark, their voices echoing in the temporary void, Michael whispered to Alice, now, let's add a touch of misdirection. Activating Eclipsing Echo, Alice's shadow began to mimic eerie sounds, creating an auditory illusion that sent shivers down the spines of the unsuspecting duo. Whispers, footsteps, and strange noises filled the darkness, bewildering Jack and Lucas. In the midst of the confusion, Pen Shadow Projection came into play. Michael's shadow extended itself, manipulating the duplicated phones from a distance. The phones began to emit ghostly lights, moving mysteriously through the darkness. Jack and Lucas, now thoroughly disoriented, exchanged nervous glances, unaware of the intricate dance of shadows and illusions orchestrated by Michael and Alice. As the darkness enveloped them, Jack and Lucas found themselves disoriented, their attempts to see thwarted by the shadowy veil. Panic set in as eerie sounds echoed around them, the auditory illusions created by Alice's shadow with the assistance of eclipsing echo. Jack, nervously, whispered to Lucas, Did you hear that? I told you, man, these guys are into some creepy stuff. I regret coming here. Lucas, equally unnerved, replied, this is beyond creepy. I can't see a thing. Where are they? Meanwhile, Michael, merged with his shadow through Shifter, relayed instructions to his shadowy companion. The shadows, in a silent dance of communication, coordinated their actions seamlessly. Michael's shadow, now an extension of himself, sent a subtle message to Alice's shadow companion, guiding it to retrieve the duplicated phones. In the dark, Jack and Lucas, oblivious to the silent communication between the shadow masters and their shadows, were left with a sense of escalating fear. Just as their anxiety peaked, pen shadow projection came into play. The duplicated phones, manipulated by Michael's shadow, began to emit ghostly lights. They floated through the darkness, seemingly guided by an otherworldly force. Jack, wide-eyed, exclaimed, Dude, do you see those floating phones? I'm telling you, we're in a horror movie. Lucas, nervously chuckling, added, Maybe it's a ghost with a smartphone. Very modern haunting, you know? The shadows, having a silent conversation amongst themselves, shared a moment of amusement at the bewildered expressions of their unwitting audience. As the darkness gradually lifted, revealing Michael and Alice emerging from the shadows, Jack and Lucas were visibly relieved yet bewildered. Jack, stuttering, asked, What the heck just happened? Are you guys like... Wizards or something? Alice, with a playful smile, responded, Wizards? Nah, just playing with shadows. But you might want to think twice before spying on our little adventures. The shadows, now visibly satisfied with their mischief, subtly nodded in agreement. The communication between the shadow masters and their shadows continued, weaving a silent narrative of camaraderie and shared amusement. Leaving Jack and Lucas to ponder the surreal experience, Michael and Alice exchanged a glance, their shadows casting a mischievous wink as if to say, the shadows have secrets, and we're just getting started. 
As the bewildered duo try to make sense of the surreal experience, Michael and Alice, with their recovered phones and a triumphant chuckle, emerged from the shadows, leaving Jack and Lucas in a state of amusing perplexity. The shadows, having played their part, seemed to ripple with satisfaction at the successful execution of the elaborate plan.